Uh, yesterday I actually tried recording a, a video and the first half of the video was good and the second half the sound quality was kind of garbled. Um, I guess I've just been having weird problems on my Mac ever since I updated to uh, the Catalina version. So anyway, I'm going to give this uh, a second part of the demo um, a retry, right, the coding part. And what we want to do is we want to go to this page here and we want to automatically extract all of these links. And once we have those links, we want to go to all of those pages. And we want to be able to pull out all the data in each of these uh, sidebars, right? So we want to pull out all that data the, and, uh, from the sidebars and then ultimately put it in some sort of uh, data frame uh, that we could do analysis on. Okay, so th there's the three parts to that. Uh, the first part is how can we extract all of these links here? So I'm going to copy this starting URL. <clears throat> and head back here. And I'm going to need a few things. I'm going to import requests. Uh, this is for downloading the HTML. And I'm going to say from BS4, beautiful soup, soup 4, import uh, beautiful soup. And that one is for parsing and searching through the HTML. So we need both of those. All right, so this is my starting URL. So it's that one. And uh, stage one is to extract all the links on the page. <clears throat> so maybe the first thing we should do is we should uh, use requests to try to download it, right? So I'm going to say requests.get URL, and remember that this gives me back a response object, like so. And uh, whenever I get a response object, the first thing I do is I say raise uh, for status. So that way, if I have like a typo here or something like that, um, I'll notice and I'll actually go back and fix it instead of just analyzing the status page, the 404 status page. Okay, so I have that. Let me look at response.text afterwards, right? That's not, a, that's not a method, it's just an attribute that I could look up. And I get this big string. I, I could try printing this if I wanted to. And, uh, and there I go, there's a bunch of uh, text for the page there. Okay, so now this next part is I would like to use Beautiful Soup to get a model of that page, right? So I'm going to say, um, you know, I could say like page or document or something like that equals a new beautiful soup object. And, and here there's always two pieces. There's, well, there's a HTML string. And then the second thing is always HTML.parser, right? So you just remember this. The second argument is always that string. And in this piece, well, where do I get my string? Uh, I could just use response.text. All right, let me paste that here. And then if I want, instead of looking at this, I can use the beautiful soup object to uh, reformat the code in kind of a more easy to read fashion. Let me print that. Right, that's just doing some minor reformatting. It's kind of putting white space where I might expect it. I have some indents here. Uh, that'll make it slightly easier to read. But of course, still there's uh, quite a mess there. We have to figure out how to get um, some informa useful information from that page. So when I'm trying to do this kind of digging, what I'll usually do, um, at least in Chrome, is <clears throat> head to the table I'm interested in and click on some of the content and then I do right click, uh, inspect. And in, um, in Chrome at least, this will show you a view of all those tags that are involved. So let me, let me take a peek at this. I guess I have a table there, and uh, I guess the table has a caption. There's this T head thing, we haven't talked about that. We haven't talked about T body. Um, within T body, there's TR, table row. Uh, you can see I have all these table rows, it's selecting them as I mouse over them. Uh, and those we're familiar with, right? Uh, we, we learned about TR last time. And then within those, right, you can see that there's all these different TDs, right, for all the different table, for all the different table data, right, those are cells. 
Uh, but this first one's a little bit different, right? The one where I actually have the link. When I look at that, that says TH. Uh, that stands for table header, and it's basically the same as TD, but it's used for this first, this first um, row and this first column, right? So we're gonna have to try to pull out the first TH within each row. Okay, so that's where we're headed. You know, the first thing I need to do is I need to find this table. All right, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try to find the tables. This I'm gonna get rid of. Okay. <clears throat> so I can use page dot find all. Right, this is one of the most important methods to remember. And let's try to find all the tables. Right, so every table tag. And so I'll say tables like this. And let's see how many tables there are. And there's one table, um, which is great. Now, I happen to remember last year when I did this demo, um, I had more than one table. And, and the reason why is they had some of this content, right? Like this overview, that was also a table. They had some other tables on here. And, and worse, um, the table I was interested in was not the first table, right? So last, last semester, this demo was more complicated because I had to make sure I was getting the right table. Here, um, we can just assume that the table we want, maybe I'll just call it table, is that first one. Now, of course, maybe Wikipedia changes and this table eventually breaks. Um, so what I should really do is, is notice that. I'm gonna just assert that tables, that the length of tables uh, equals one. And then somehow if that page changes in the future, I'll know I have the right one. Okay, so I have this table. Let's print off that table. Okay, so that's a big table that we pulled out from the page. And I can see it has a lot of that information I'm interested in. Right? If I scroll through here, I can see oh, there's Alaska. Um, so, so this looks pretty good. Um, but let me, I'm just going to get rid of this here. Uh, what do I want from that table? I guess I want to pull out each row individually. So I should do this. I should say trs equals uh, tv.find all uh, tr. Uh, why did I say table here? I mean, I could have said page. Um, if I had said page, I would find all the trs on the page. And, uh, you know, I guess that would have been okay, right? Because I only have one table. Uh, but to make this code more robust in the future, I should do this, right? Because maybe if later that page changes and there's more tables, I'll make sure I find the right one, and then I'll just pull out the rows from that. So I'm going to pull out those rows, and let's just look at what the length of those are. Uh, there's 52. Uh, that sounds about right. There's 50 states. There's 50 states, and then there's these two rows here at the top. Um, you know what I'm going to do just to really make sure... Uh, I always have the right tables. I'm just going to assert that this is greater than 50. Greater than, well, greater than or equal to 50. Right, there's 50 states. Uh, of course, I know this is true, right? So that's not going to cause any problem now. But this will save me a lot of time later if that page changes and somehow I end up with the wrong table. It'll help you quickly debug in the future. And what you're probably quickly learning this class is that minimizing debug time is how you get fast at programming, at least for most people. Okay, so I have all these TRs. Let's loop over them. I'm going to say for TR and TRs, uh, let's print off what the table row is. Okay, so lots of table rows. Okay, and, uh, and what am I interested in? I guess I'm interested in, let me head back here. Let me inspect this. I want to get the hyperlink inside of that first th, right? I just want to get that first th. So so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first get the th like this. I'm just going to say tr.find th. I'm going to search inside of that row uh, for a table header. Let me just print that piece. And, uh, and I can see I'm getting a little bit closer, right? There I go. There's a TH for Alabama. There's a TH for Alaska. Uh, there's a TH for Arizona. Um, so far, so good. Uh, I, I guess the next step is that 
I really want to find that hyperlink inside of it, right? Um, I ultimately want to get this piece here, because that's trying to tell me about the other page I need to download. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to say th.find all a tags. And these will be my links. And, uh, and let me print off the length of these. How many a tags are inside of my header? <clears throat> I guess in the first two there are none, right? Does that make sense? I guess this is kind of a weird, this is kind of a weird row that um, it looks like it's one cell, but it's really kind of spanning two, right? But there's no links in those first two, and uh, then most of them have one. I, I guess there's a couple of weird cases where it has two, right? Well, let's look at those. Um, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say if length of links is greater than one, uh, let's just print off what those links are. And, and let's, yeah, let's try that. So I guess Kentucky has something weird going on, uh, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania. L let's see what's going on with those. Let's look at Kentucky. For example, uh, I see there's Kentucky, Massachusetts, uh, Pennsylvania. Right, so what you're really starting to see is as you're doing this web scraping stuff is we're dealing with a lot of messy data. Uh, they didn't really make it uniform for the sake of a program to deal with it. So you're going to have to think in each case how we want to handle that. And, uh, and I think what I'm seeing here is that for each of these cases where we have the two links, um, I'm interested in the first one, right? I don't want these uh, citation links. I want the, the links to the states, right? Because if I, if I grab that first link, well, then I actually get to the state. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing I think we can do is we can say if length of links equals zero, continue. Uh, I, don't, I don't care about that row. There's no state information there. Otherwise, I'm just interested in that first link. So I'm going to say links of zero. And... Uh, well, what, what, let's just have a quick reminder. What What is each of those links? Um, each one of those is one of these tag elements, right, from BS4. And, uh, and so there's different things we can do with those. Um, when, I, when I have one of these tag elements, one of the things I can do with it is I can, I can pull the text out of it. So I'm going to say link.getText. Right. The other thing I can do from it is I can pull out the att attributes. I'm going to say link dot adders. Right. So so here I have. Maybe let me delete this now. So here I have the text inside of it is Alabama, Alaska, so on. And when I look at the adders, the attributes, then I get this nice dictionary, uh, which is exactly what I want because that's going to give me the hyperlink reference. See that? Right? Sometimes, sometimes they will be more complicated, right? Because they need to distinguish it. Are we talking about Georgia the country or Georgia the state? Right? So I have the nice simple names and then the exact location where they are. I can't always just assume, like it is for Florida, that, that the link is directly based on that, right? That's why I need to do all this um, work to try to figure out what the links are. Any others like that? Yeah, there's New York the state and New York the city. Right, so it's good that I'm, I'm kind of grabbing both these pieces of information. Okay, well, so here's my dictionary, right? That link.adders is this whole thing. And uh, what I'd really like is this, that I'd like to pull out that value. And href is the key associated with that. So what I want to do, I want to pull out this href piece. I'm going to paste that there, run this again. And now you can see for each state I'm grabbing the link for it. Okay. So so let, let, let's do this. Let's um let's uh I'm gonna create a new dictionary state links. A new dictionary and, and one comment that I think really is worth making is what are the keys and the values in your dictionaries? People um, don't always have that crisp in their mind, but getting that crisp in your mind will help you write good code. So the key in this case is going to be a state name, and the value is going to be um, a URL. 
for that states page. Okay. Yeah, and so so I already have the key here, and then the value is going to be based on, on this piece. Right, so let's do that, right? So I want to say state uh, state links key equals value. You know, this is the key I want. And I printed that key here. Um, so I guess I'll use that key, right? I'll use that just like so. And uh, then what? What about what about this value? Well, well that's kind of based on this. So let me let me look at that. Um, but and here I when I've all done, I'll print it out. But it, but it's not a full URL. Just like with file paths, we have um, absolute paths and relative paths. Uh, this is a relative path for the website, right? So if I head back here uh, and I actually open up Alabama, you see it's slash wiki slash Alabama, but I missed this first piece, right? And, and, and here I really need to get the full the full deal, right? So I'm gonna, maybe I should put that in a separate URL equals that piece plus this piece. Uh, I just want to get those URLs. And now I have a bunch of complete URLs here, right? I can, uh, well, let's draw down, let's test Wisconsin. Okay, so here's Wisconsin. Let me try opening this up in a new window, and it works. Okay, so that was the first piece. The next piece is I want to loop through these, and uh, and I want to download them one at a time. Okay, well, let's do that. So that was stage one, right? I guess we're stage one is up here. Extract all the links from the page. And maybe, maybe I'll just comment this out, right? We don't need to print all of that. Uh, stage two is download uh, the HTML page for each state. Now, I think what will be nice for us is instead of, I, I could do something like this. I could say for key and state lengths, because, well, this is a dictionary, right? When I have this for loop, I, I get keys here. Okay, but, but I think what would be nice is if I can try to set up this loop, at least while I'm debugging, so I can just loop over like three states. Right, then I can get my then I can get my code working before I run it on the whole thing, right? Because it's actually going to take a while to run this code, and, uh, and and so somehow I'd like to do something like this. I'd like to take like a slice of the keys, you know, maybe like the first three states, uh, but that doesn't work because this is not a list. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back here. Uh, I, I want to create a key list. Maybe I'll, I'll say like a state name list because my keys in this case are just state names. It's going to be that thing. And I'm going to convert that to sorted order. Uh, with sorted, I mean, usually what we do is we give it a list and then it makes a new list in sorted order. But what's cool about it is that even if I give it something that's not a list, as like something I can loop over, it will not only convert it to a list, but it'll sort it for me. Right, so so this will give me a list of all those states, and uh, and that's what I want to put here. And here, I you know I should just call this state name. Let me just print off those state names. That works great, doesn't it? Right, so I could do five. And you know when I'm all done, right, I'm going to troubleshoot with just a few. Uh, but when I'm all done, I'm going to get rid of that slice, and I can do all of them. Okay, but first let's just get it working for the first three states. I'm going to say to do, remove, slice. This is just a note to myself to fix that up at the end so I can make it work for all the states. Okay, so there are all the states. And, um, and what I want to do is I want to download the, the URL that corresponds to it. Right, so this was my dictionary. Aw, oh, there's my dictionary. And so if I put a key here, let me just look at this again. I like to refer, refer to these. Okay, so the key is the state name, right? So if I put a state name here, I'm going to get the URL back, right? So if I 
if this is the state name, then this whole thing will be the URL. All right, so I'm gonna put that state name right here. And that will give me a URL, which I'll print. Let me print those URLs. And there we go, do these work? Uh, it appears they do. Okay, so let's download those things. I'm gonna say request.get URL, r equals request.get URL, and then we print off the text in each page. Okay, and uh, I get a lot of HTML, right? I'll, enough, enough HTML for all three pages right there. So that's pretty cool. Um, what I'd like to do though is I'd like this this um, HTML code to end up in a file on my computer, right? That's what I want to do. I want to download all of these pages onto my computer, and then you know that'll be slow. But after that, I can keep using those files, and it'll be fast, right? Because accessing files on my computer is faster than accessing other files. Okay, so I need to have a file name equals. Uh, I'll come back. Right? I, it's hard to come up with good names, isn't it? And I'm going to say f equals open file name. And I'm going to close that at the end. And uh, uh, you know, I want to write. I want to write that data to this file. So I better put a w here, right? I need to write to that file. So I'm going to say f dot write. And here I put a big string. Uh, what will that string be? It's just going to be the data inside of that r. So I'm going to say r dot text. And uh, okay, I should come up with a good file name here. Um, you know, let's just, if I'm downloading Alabama, let's have it be alabama.html, right? So I'm just going to take the state name and append or concatenate on.html. That's going to be my name. That seems pretty good. All right, so, so here's the download piece, and then this is the save it to a file piece. And uh, you know, one last thing I realized that I should have done is when I print that request, I should say r dot raise for status. Uh, if any of those URLs are bad, I would sure like to know. Okay. Let me, just so I can also see what's going on, let me print the URLs as we go. Let's see if this works. Okay, something worked, right? Let me go see what happens over here. Uh, it looks like I got a few of those states. What if I open one of these up? And it's, it's, it's hopefully loading. There we go. So, so I have the information about the state. It's not formatted the same as um, on the website, the real website, uh, but, but I still have all the information here, right? And we'll be able to deal with it. Okay, so that seems good. Um, now is the time to go back and do my to do, right? Sometimes when I'm all done, I, I search on the page. Do I have any to do's left? Uh, I'd like to download all 50 states, right? So I'm not going to just take the first three. Let, let me run this. There we go, and, and here I have all my states. Let's check Wisconsin. Is Wisconsin very low? I don't know why it's taking so long. There we go. Okay, there's Wisconsin. Okay. Now, now, one last detail here that I think is important is, well, I mean, let's say this was a bigger loop. Let's say I was downloading um, like 50,000 things. And let's say somehow I lost internet connectivity or it crashed in the middle and I have to restart, but I've already downloaded half the files. Um, is there a way that we can make this code more efficient? Um, in particular, like let's say that this program is running and I finish like half the job and then I get interrupted 
is it possible that when I retry, I can just kind of pick up where I left off instead of doing everything, doing everything again? And, uh, and the answer is that yes, I can. What I want to do is figure out whether this file already exists. If it already exists, I don't want to do, do this download work again. Right? So, so somehow, before I have this, this is the expensive piece, I have to check if this file already exists. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull these two pieces out. Uh, let me pull the file name up there. And let me also grab that URL. Okay, so I haven't changed anything yet. I'm just moving around lines of code. And right, what, what is the big goal here? Right? We want to download from this URL and write to this file. What I'm going to check is, is, is do I already have that file? If os.path.exists, file name, and then continue. Right, I don't want to do that one. So let me run that. And, uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to import OS. Uh, it's good style to do that up at the top. So here I'm going to import the operating system module. Let me try this again. And uh, oh, what happened there? Um, you, you know what I should do is I should uh, put the state name up at the top, right? That's how we can make, tell it's making progress. Okay, let's look at that. And, and you see it's instantaneous, right? Because I already have all those files downloaded. Uh, but what if I had it? What if I had, um, uh, let's say I've been missing a few of these. We'll say uh, Wisconsin, and we're missing Texas, and we're missing Oregon. Let's delete those. We delete those files. Yeah, let's delete those three. And, and so now when I run this, what do we see? Well, that was kind of actually a little hard to see. Let me delete the first three. That'll be make for a better demo. I delete those three states. Let me run this. And I see it kind of goes slowly on the three that we're missing, and then it kind of quickly does the rest. All right, so that'll be good to do. Right? This is called caching. Uh, caching means you're saving some data that you uh, previously um, spent a lot of work to get, right? And, and if we need it again, well, why can't we just do something faster? Why can't we just, just use it there? Okay, so that was stage two. Uh, stage three is how can we get some value um, out of those pages, right? How can I get some value out of Wisconsin.html? So let me, let me head down here. Stage three, write function to extract dictionary from state's HTML page. Uh, so we got how this function extract. I don't call this whole, I don't call it state to dictionary. Right, let's call it state stats. Sorry, I'm being decisive here. And I have to have a path. And, uh, and well, I'm probably going to call it something. Let me come back to this. I'm going to call it like this. I'm going to say state stats wisconsin.html. And let me just print this path. Okay, it says wisconsin.html right there. <clears throat> okay, so I want to I want to pull some data out of this thing. For example, let's say I want to find the capital of Madison, or I'm sorry, the capital of Wisconsin is Madison. Where, where will I find this information? Um, I'm going to say inspect in Chrome, and I, I see. Well, what do I have? I have I have these two pieces. You see that? Let me let me shrink this down. I have the left left piece could be some sort of key, and that right piece could almost be some sort of value. Um, I guess uh, can you see? I, I can't quite see it. Look over on the left. You see how it says th there, right? So I have a th where that's containing my key, a td that's containing my value. But you, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for all the rows on this page that have two pieces like that, and whenever they have two pieces. The left piece is going to be my key, and the right piece will be my value. So let's try that. I'm going to say document equals beautiful soup. Uh, here I need an HTML string and HTML dot parser. Uh, well, where does this come from now? I mean, let me let me look back before. Um, before. 
before I got that HTML string by doing a web request, didn't I? Uh, but that's not the only place I can do an HTML string. In this case, I've already, uh, because of stage two, uh, downloaded all these files to my computer. So I'm mean, going instead of getting this from a new web request, I'm just going to grab that data from my from my file, right? So I'm going to say f equals open path f dot close. And I'm going to say HTML string equals f dot read. Everything in that file goes into that string, and then I'm going to use it here. And uh, maybe maybe just to make sure this is working, I'm going to say uh, dot dot printify. Okay, so I'm pulling all the data out of that. Uh, now I want to use that thing to um, to get my rows, right? So I'm going to say trs equals dot dot find all tr. I want to look for any any row with two columns anywhere on that page, and I'm going to have that be part of my dictionary. And uh, and well, let's loop over those things for tr table row and table rows. Let's just print it. Okay, I have a bunch of those. I want to find those cells, right? Uh, so let me try to do that. Let me say tr dot find all. So within that row, uh, you know, now I have a little bit of a dilemma, right? I mean, I could say td, and that would be my value, or I could say th, and that would be my header. R really, I, I don't care whether they're using td or th. I just want either of those things. And, uh, and beautiful soup actually lets you do that. You could say, I want either of these things inside of that row, right? So I'm going to say cells equals that. Well, let me just print the length of these cells. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I said I wanted to print the length of them, didn't I? Right, so lots of different tables, but, but all these twos, right? Those, all those twos are probably that case where I have um, a key like Madison, I'm sorry, a key um, like capital and a value like Madison, right? So those are the only ones I really care about. So I'm going to say if the length of cells equals two, uh, then I want to get a key and a value from that. And then I guess here, what will I do? I'm just going to print both those things. And I want to print the key and the value. Okay, well, I think my, my key comes from that first cell. So I'll say cell 0. And I just want the text inside of it. That other one, right, that second one, I'll get the text from that one too. Let me run this. Uh, name error. So this is online. You know, I don't have cell. Oh, you know what it is? Is this is plural? I need an S here, don't I? Okay. Denon, Wisconsin. That makes sense, right? I mean, with people in Wisconsin are called Wisconsinites. Capital Madison, largest city, Milwaukee. Um, uh, population, we're the 20th largest. Um, so on and so forth, right? So the details about politics, our website. Uh, uh, what, what else do we have? I guess we have um, uh, we have a bird, the robin. Okay, so, so let's do this. Let's put all this data in a dictionary, right? So I'm going to say stats equals that, and at the end I'm going to return those stats. And then when I'm here, I'm going to say stats of key equals value. I do that, and now I get this very nice. Uh, there's some weird things with bullet points, right? But for the uh, for the most part, I can get a lot of good information um, out of here, right? Like for example, if I want to say, um, what what is the well, let's look at a few things here. What is the state beverage or dance, right? I can uh, I can grab these stats equals that, uh, and let me I'm going to print off uh, what is our state beverage. So, and what was all in one? Let me look at our state dances. And uh, did, did I not spell beverage right? Let me just look at the 
Wisconsin stats again. How do I spell beverage? Did I not spell it that way? Let me, let me try that one more time. Oh, it's capitalized. That's what it is, isn't it? Let me, let me try this again. Let me try that. So, say the state drink is, is our beverage, and uh, the state dance. What is that one? Crazy, Malcolm Polka. There's lots of that, and we could, you know, easily call this function for any of those 50 states we have, and uh, and try those as well. All right. So hopefully this recorded a little better. Let's let's find out.